All right. We're back with images 16 through 20 of my favorite 25 images of 2022. Insert my disclaimer here. My favorites are not necessarily my best photos, and some of that is some of them are great, I think. Uh, but that's the thing about best is it's totally subjective. So what I think is best is probably not what you think is best, and everybody has different ideas on what is best. And now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the images. Uh, this is a landscape image, one of only a couple pure landscape images that are included in my top 25. It seemed to be a year of wildlife. Uh, but this one is just, you can't pass this stuff up. I, this was the same day of the elk that was the last image on my last video, if that even makes sense, where I was out on a workshop with Jen. Link to Instagram below. She's in the description. Link to her Instagram. Check that out. Uh, and we were out looking for wildlife, but when you see stuff like this happening, you have to stop and take pictures of this kind of stuff. It's just incredible morning with that elk. We had tons of fog and the elk action was amazing. Got some beautiful environmental stuff with the elk. And then you turn around and look the other way and sometimes this is what you get. And so this was one of those magic moments of just like a perfectly framed Grand Teton in perfect light the framing with the bright clouds and fog, and then the snow in the middle with a dark, stormy background. Uh, I don't know what else you could ask for. I can't think of anything else to ask for on this one. So it's wonderful. I went to black and white and punched up the contrast even more than a very contrasty scene that it was to really emphasize the darkness of those storm clouds and then the brightness of the snow and the fog and the clouds. So. Uh, just wonderful black and white image, added some contrast, and bang. I love this one. Just a classic view of the Tetons that you, the Tetons look beauty, beautiful all the time, but when you get a situation like this once or twice a year, it's like magic, and that was that one. So Nikon Z9 with the 70 to 200. ISO 64, F8, 1, 125th of a second. Again, really good image quality there at ISO 64, F8. Everything is absolutely tack sharp on a really super tack sharp lens. I can print this thing huge and it will look awesome. Feel free to buy a huge print of this. It'll look awesome. And next image. All right, more, more elk. So here we are, this one, we've moved into early October now. Another like magic morning in the Tetons chasing elk around out there with some ground fog. We're out there before, before sunrise and we have the peachy sky and the ground fog and this massive bull elk. I think he's seven points by seven points. He is awesome. He's one of the huge studs out there and we were lucky to find him out there roaming uh, this particular image, he paused with that tree in the, in the frame as well to kind of balance it a little bit and looked, gave us a beautiful pose, caught a little glint in his eye of the rising sun off the other direction. Uh, <clears throat> just peachy sky, his antlers are like perfectly clean background with that fog behind him. And just make him sharp, and I prefer that tree being out of focus with the blurry f2.8. That's the Z9, 400 f2.8, ISO 500, 12 50th of a second. So super clean, wonderful image quality. Uh, I like the composition with having that tree in there, uh, giving it a little bit more depth, and obviously the subject is fantastic as well. I was on a workshop this day with Jim and Ken, and we had an absolute blast out there and we made a ton of really amazing photos of this elk. Uh, this is just the one that I happened to like the best. So that's the one I chose for my top 25. Anyway, Jim and Ken, we had an awesome day out there. It was great. Uh, now on to another elk in October. This is a group of elk. I was on a workshop this day with Bill. Bill and I were out there together. Um, <clears throat> following this big bull around with his harem. And this is a backlit scene when they came over a little ridge and there was fog and a little bit of dust in the air there. And so we got that drama, the mood of that environment. 
Um, so the morning sun was just coming up, backlighting all that uh, foggy breath and the dust that that herd had kicked up. And I just had a little gap there where the big bull was trailing the cows, which they often do. The cows come through first and then the big bull follows them around. So he was following them in. Uh, I waited for a little moment where there he was in a gap between his harem. And uh, so I could isolate him a little bit. I put the focus on him. Uh, so he's the sharpest and can draw a little attention to him, even though he's like certainly not the most visually dominant in the frame, uh, your eye eventually makes it to him, and that's, that's the focal point of the image. So this is, again, the Z9, 400 millimeter lens. I stopped this one down to f8. Um, I did want a little bit more depth of field. I'd been shooting this guy with the, amongst the harem, so I wanted a little more depth of field to include some of the other girls with him on that. Uh, and so I'm at 25 hundredth of a second, ISO 500. And just kind of telling the story of these big bulls out gathering up their harems and for mating season. Uh, and just these beautiful scenes that happen early in the morning out there. Now we're on to another great gray owl. Uh, this one I was alone in the woods. I was vlogging this one. If you want to watch that vlog, dig through my videos from last fall and you'll find this. It was a absolutely spectacular day. I made some unbelievably good images, this being one of them, and just one of those almost perfect days out in the field with a camera. And I happened to be vlogging that day, so this was a part of that. Here we are, Nikon Z9, the 400 millimeters at f2.8, one one thousandth of a second, ISO 3200. And I'd been photographing this guy flying around. And so I was at a thousandth of a second. And that dictated me being up to ISO 3200, which is still pretty reasonable. I can still get really good image quality on that camera. Uh, had I known that he wasn't going to fly right here, I probably would have cut that in half. And five hundredth of a second would have been plenty. But he did do like a jump maneuver here where he fret his wings out and kind of jumped like a couple feet down on the log. And so I needed that thousandth of a second to capture that. Uh, so I'm glad I was at a thousandth here, but for this particular frame, a 500th would have been, would have been fine here. So anyway, he was just stepping, walking down this log. He, had, he was sitting up higher on this tilted log, and then he heard something down here. So he walked down and then was listening to it down here. He eventually gave up on it and flew away, but he was just walking down the log to investigate a noise he heard down there. And they're very awkward when they walk, but so cute. And so this was the awkward, cute walk that he was doing down the log. And uh, I love it. Everything about it. Nice, clean background. Um, boy, just a fantastic moment in the woods and coming away with a fantastic photo. It's a great day. All right. Now we've moved to November, and we had early snow this year in the Tetons. So uh, this was up at the Oxbow Bend, and the Oxbow had already frozen over, except for some little pockets of... Uh, like where some maybe warm springs is bubbling up through there and keeping it from freezing solid. And so these otters were out on the oxbow running across the ice and then they would drop into these little uh, open holes of water and go hunt a little bit, pop back up. Anyway, so they were running kind of from hole to hole. And so this, three, this trio of otters had run across and this one in the middle chose, instead of just running, he chose to slide through that slush. And so that's what he's doing. He's sliding through that slush as his two buddies, one is leaving that slush and the other one's approaching it. Uh, and so I love the three subjects. They're very interesting. They're visually beautiful with the lovely curves and everything. Uh, and then this one that's kind of flopping through the, the slush in that uh, open piece of water. It just, uh, I love this image. It makes me smile. Maybe even laugh when I look at it. So uh, anyway, that one was the Nikon Z9, 
with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And I chose that 100 to 400 for this particular scene because there were these little pockets of kind of this slushy spots scattered randomly about. So as the otters were out in that stuff, I was being able, I needed, I wanted to be able to zoom in and out to change my composition to include some of those or none of those uh, and shoot some wide where I had like interesting compositional elements to work with there. And uh, so this one was actually shot at 340 millimeters, but I needed that flexibility to achieve what I wanted out there as these otters were moving through all these compositional elements. And so the power of the zoom came through on that one. Uh, that was at 500th of a second, F8, ISO 800. Okay, so that's it. That's number image number 20. So I'm done with this batch of five. We will do one more batch of five, and that will be it. See you on the next video.